President Obama and the Russian president just signed a new strategic arms reduction treaty, but the treaty needs to be ratified by the U.S. Senate. Is that going to happen? Moments ago, Republican Senator Lamar Alexander went on the record. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you, Greta. Senator, last week the president uh, was in Prague and signed a treaty with the Russian president, the START II treaty. Um, mm -hmm. Is it going to be ratified by the U.S. Senate this year? No, not this year. That's my view. Now, it's a, it's a modest step, but I think a good step in the right direction. This is a step Nixon, Reagan, first Bush, second Bush, all have taken us. It would take us down to 1,500 deployed nuclear warheads. That ought to be enough to blow everybody to kingdom come if we chose to do it. But, but it took a year and a half to do it. We have a lot of questions. Uh, we need to get the right answers, and then it might get 67 votes. All right. Um, why wouldn't you at least push it? Or why? I realize that you, you're in the minority party, but why not push it for ratification? What do you need to know? Well, we can go to work on it, but it's, it's not like the health care bill. We want to read it. <laughs> and, we've got six, and, and it takes 67 votes to pass it, so we can insist on that. We don't even get the whole thing until May. And now we have a Supreme Court nomination to deal with, which is going to take most of the next three or four months. We need to know. Uh, uh, can we verify it? There's been new technology since the START One Treaty. Will the administration upgrade our own nuclear weapons? That's a part of what we want to also see done at the same time. Can we still build our missiles of our own? There are a lot of questions we need to ask. It took 431 days to ratify the treaty in 1991. It'd probably take about the same amount of time to do this one. I have a pretty good understanding of what will happen if it's ratified. What I don't know, though, is that suppose the United States Senate doesn't ratify it. What would that mean? Well, for right now, the countries have agreed since the old one expired in December just to continue with the process that's going on between Russia and the United States. A lot is going on. You know, we're, uh, we're taking their old nuclear weapons and take them to Oak Ridge, Tennessee, in many cases, breaking them down to low-level radioactive material that we can use in our nuclear power plants, for example. So President Bush uh, uh, and, and, and this administration have continued with the old agreement until we can deal with this agreement. Now, we have, as you, as you know, a number of nuclear warheads that could blow us all to kingdom come multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, is, would this treaty, as you understand it now, and I realize that you need to read it, would it weaken us in any way? Do you foresee that? Well, if it, if it does, we shouldn't, we shouldn't approve it. I mean, one of the principal things we need to do is to make sure we don't weaken our ability to defend ourselves. How many do we need, though? How many warheads do we need? Well, we, uh, 1,500 would be enough. But the question is, uh, are they modern enough? Uh, that's one of the questions that many of us have. We haven't upgraded our, our, our weapons system in a long time. Two, uh, will we know what the Russians are doing? Uh, President Reagan used to say, trust and verify. Well, what was trust and verify in 1991 might be very different in 2011 because of the change in technology. Is there any reason to believe that our existing warheads aren't modern enough, or not, would not uh, fulfill any uh, purpose, uh, should we, the horrible, unexpected, terrible event of using them? There's plenty of reason to believe that. In fact, a very high-level commission, a bipartisan commission, former Secretary Perry was on it, uh, Clinton's defense secretary, who said that we, we have some real problems with our current uh, nuclear weapons. They need to be upgraded, and we need to make sure they're working. And one of the principal things we want to make sure of is that we have an ambitious program to make sure that our weapons that we have work while we're agreeing to reduce the number that we have. How optimistic are you that the president's summit today here in Washington, nuclear summit, is yeah. one that will advance the United States interests, and, and especially that there's some criticism, for instance, that North Korea and Iran aren't part of it. That's one criticism, understandably, why they're not part of it. And secondly, that India and Pakistan um, doesn't seem to be a huge issue in this summit when those two have been at each other's throats and are both nuclear-powered, uh, nuclear-weaponed countries. Well, I, I want it to work. I think every American should want it to work. Nuclear terrorism is a big issue. This subject, this summit is on the right subject. Now, the question is, we want it to be more meaningful than the health care summit or the climate change summit, that something actually come out of it. By that, I mean, would Russia and China agree to reinstitute the idea of saying to Iran, uh, you don't need an arrangement facility to run a nuclear power plant. We'll rent uh, low-level 
uranium to you and then take it back when you're through with it? Then we wouldn't have an issue. Or will Pakistan agree to make more secure its facilities? There's some talk today that Ukraine will give up its highly enriched uranium uh, that was left over from the Soviet Union. Maybe we can take that to Oak Ridge, blend it down, and use it in our nuclear power plant. So I want it to work, and, and we'll wait to see if it does. All right. So, uh, use of nuclear power. Um, I know that you're a great advocate of this. Um, why? Well, this summit should take the time to look around the world and see that there are 16 countries building 55 new nuclear reactors and make sure that that's done in a way that doesn't create any, any, any problem. The way to do that would be the way South Korea and, uh, and the United Arab Emirates have agreed to do. South Korea basically enriches the uranium to a low level, enough for a power plant, very different from a bomb, rents it to the United Arab Emirates, and when they've finished with it, takes it back. I mean, we should be building a lot of nuclear power plants around the world. We need clean energy. Uh, if we were going to war in the United States, we wouldn't put our nuclear navy in mothballs and, and start using sailboats. And since we need clean energy, we shouldn't put our nuclear power plants in mothballs and use windmills, but that's exactly what we've been doing. We've had, in effect, a national windmill policy because we haven't built a new nuclear power plant in this country in 30 years, and it's 70 percent of our clean electricity, and we can, we invented it. We should lead the world in it. We, we could use this summit to help make sure that the low-level enrichment of uranium that is used in these plants, China's building one every three months now, is done in such a way that there's no risk that we confuse it with a nuclear weapon. Senator, thank you, sir. Thank you, Greta. Next, the best of the rest is...